how are your stories changing? Well, obviously, part of it is maturation, but do you, are 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 they changing? Mm-hmm. Do do you feel something That's, different? Uh, or? I don't know. Uh, no, I, I I really don't know. Do you, do you do you foresee an end to your writing? Yes, certainly. Uh, well, obviously, yeah, hopefully, yeah. shortly before or maybe shortly <laughs> after we <laughs> die, right? But aside from that, do you see yourself stopping to write? No, no, you I don't. No. Okay. But, uh, what is it you do when you're just tired of writing? When you have just had it, and you well, just cannot put another word on another piece of paper? I've got lots of projects going on at all times, so it's not the matter of of taking the time or stopping the writing to go to the projects. It's the time of taking the time of the projects to go to the writing. So the, the difficulty sense. hasn't uh, arisen at all. You just what about writing blocks, Jim? I cross those or yeah, well, it's generally in uh, about two thirds through the book. I come to a situation where I've written myself into an absolute impasse. So what what can I possibly do now to end this book? And so sometimes I I just get stuck in. Uh, I know Joe Elder asked me to write a story for him called so, uh, it was ultimately called Solomon's Plan, and it wasn't a very long story. Uh, I forget. Seven, eight thousand words, and I had a good story to start that, a good idea to start that story with, and I thought it was going to be a real fine story. And then halfway through, I couldn't figure a decent way of ending that story to save my neck. And so I just had to. There are lots of ways of ending it, but each way seemed uh, kind of uh, the cliche, yeah. contrived or cliche or or stupid, or something. So I had to kind of change the whole uh, point of the story to make it a, rather than a kind of a cosmic story, to a kind of a story of interpersonal relationships. And uh, Joe Elder wasn't satisfied with the thing, and he mentioned it to me. And I, but I spent, just in this six, eight thousand word story, I spent about two months trying to sit there Cudgeling my brain, trying to figure something out. And, of course, I got very angry with myself, very angry with the story, disgusted, and, but these are the kind of things you get into. But sometimes you will pose yourself a problem that just simply don't have any solution. And uh, I suppose some genius might be able to work out some... Well, for instance, instead of Earl Hines, the piano player, that that he gets himself into harmonic, yeah. harmonic, and tries uh, to work his way out. <laughs> har- harmonic difficulties in the same way, and then he goes through all these agonies trying to work himself out of these things. And being a genius, he ultimately you well usually succeeds. <laughs> but sometimes he doesn't. He can't do it all the time. Sorry. That's uh, let me interrupt for a short cue. If our, anybody in our audience is interested in jazz, following us tonight at midnight program called Goodbye Pork Pie Hat, and uh, Paul Vangelisti, KPFK's Cultural Affairs Director, is going to be uh, doing doing his jazz program. So we might, might hang in for that, that, about 15 minutes or so from now, right after hour 25 finishes. By the way, this is the first of our new time periods of exactly two hours. We were phasing out to midnight to 2 a.m., over a period of six weeks. It was nice of the station to allow us to do that. <laughs> yes. Oh, what uh, hours you fast keep? Very strange ones. Uh, mm-hmm. The program started off being on from 11 until 2. Started off at three hours. Mm-hmm. Then it got so popular, they put us on at 12 o'clock and ran us for two hours. Mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. then they ran us, uh, starting last month, we ran from 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. Hmm. And now we're on from 10 to 12, mm-hmm. so, uh, perfectly obvious. We got a letter this week saying, are you going to call the program something other than Hour 25? Right, since right. The answer is no. We're going to continue to call it Hour 25. Hour Why not grok around the clock? <laughs> we're going to call it Hour 25 because that's a very good title, and I laid out 35 bucks for stationery, and I refuse to change it. <laughs> what kind of stationery? 
Paper stationery. Paper stationery. You've got a ream of it. <laughs> I do. Can, 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 can we wander I'm back? I'm going to stop a... start answering some of those letters. I mean, yeah, I forgot I had the paper. Right. <sighs> you write mysteries as well under your well, real name? Well, no. I've, mm -hmm. uh, I haven't written many mysteries recently. Uh, I wrote something called Dad Ronald. Um, a television movie was made of it last year or so ago, but probably I won't be doing any more murder mysteries or suspense because I've just got too many other of the... I hate to use the word science fiction. It's a bad word, and as everybody knows. And the, but if there's no other nomenclature that, that is uh, adequate. Just like jazz is a very bad word for uh, very beautiful music. It's kind of a doesn't have a good sound to it. But it reminds you of its it. origins. Just yeah. But, uh, so I guess we're stuck with jazz and science fiction and <laughs> all these other things. So, uh, why worry about it? Yeah. Anyway, I just make more money at science fiction than do with these other things. You do make more money at science yeah. fiction. The, uh, as a general rule, the uh, murder mysteries, they uh, get published and you get a hard cover, soft cover, maybe a few foreign rights. Science fiction, I, I'll i get hard cover if I'm lucky, but the soft cover, and then the foreign, foreign sales. I get lots of foreign sales, mm. and then reissues. And uh, it all adds up, makes a larger package than the murder mysteries. Although, if I sell to the like this bad Ronald, I sold that to the television industry, and I made more money out of that than I do out of many science fiction. But I can't count on that happening. See, that's you the start. You mentioned earlier selling a science fiction story or working on one. Of that was one of these Magnus Rydell stories. Actually, one of the first the first two Magnus Rydell stories were the most horrible thing. Uh, in fact, I'm not too pleased with any of my early stories. I was learning a trade, and the way to learn it, of course, is by doing it. And well, ideally, yeah. I wouldn't learn it by doing it. Yeah, I suppose some people leap yeah. full blown into, into uh, or professional they write, status. Yeah. Or they write and they never learn. Yeah, they, that, yeah that's the frightening part. Yeah. So it was an apprenticeship. And yeah, that's right. And it, I can't believe that somebody in the films had the vision to see that that... That science fiction might it wasn't produce. Any it was. Uh, uh, it wasn't a monster movie. Right away, that puts it too late. No, but ahead. The, 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 he didn't buy the story. It was Julian Blaustein. His I don't know if he's still producing or not. But uh, he bought the story, not through any literary excellence of the story, or any remarkable characterization, but because there was one most trivial, ordinary idea in the thing, which he thought he could make a movie out of. And this idea, I won't even tell you what it is, because it, it's so... Uh, <laughs> it's, so it's so simple, and, and he could have thought of it himself. Why did he pay me for the story and then hire me to come down and work in the story? It's, it's just one of these miracles of old Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You could have, he could have a dozen of these same ideas in 20 minutes, just sitting like you're, you know, just sitting there making notes of a piece of paper. Uh, I think it was Aldous Budras in one of the current science fiction magazines tried to come to grips with the, the enigma of John W. Campbell's personality, what he was as mm -hmm. a total. Of course, that can't be done yet, but he tried. And uh, I wondered if you had any stories about Campbell or others no, that you'd I like to share. I never knew him very well. I never had the opportunity did you know uh, Tony Boucher very well yeah yes I knew him quite well he in fact I used to live only several blocks away from him but uh, I didn't like playing poker and uh, he had these famous poker parties and I never went to those things they didn't interest me yeah. and uh, never I was never part of the Boucher's immediate coterie, although we were fairly good friends. Mm -hmm. In other words, he went to his parties, he came to my parties. But uh, I wasn't one of his intimate circle, by any means. 